In this video, I'm going to show you my favorite trick for sentence equivalence, and we're going to do three to four worked examples. But before I get to that, I want to emphasize one thing. Unlike maybe some other videos, I'm not going to deceive you. The number one thing you have to do for sentence equivalence is understand the sentence. There's no secret trick that's going to make sure you get every sentence right unless you understand the sentences themselves. So don't rush to look at synonyms or rush to use the trick I'm about to show you. Instead, take your time to very slowly read the sentence and try and understand what's going on. Now, this is similar to my advice for reading comprehension, where I emphasize reading slower than other people and understanding more about the passage. Well, that strategy also paid off for me in sentence equivalence where again, I got a perfect score. And how did I do it? Not necessarily all by using these tricks, but by reading slowly and going, what is this sentence about? What are they trying to say? Do I understand why the author wrote this sentence? Only by doing that can you truly become a master of sentence equivalence. The other thing that I would note before we get to my trick is of course, vocabulary helps. There's no substitute for increasing your vocabulary. Now I've done several other videos on this about how to memorize vocabulary and how to practice vocabulary. And I'll be doing more in the future. But of course, if you can aim to increase your vocabulary by between 50 to 100 new words a day, or the days you're studying at least, then you're all set for getting a better sentence equivalent score. One final thing before we get to the trick, I'm assuming you know the basic layout of a sentence equivalence question. If not, you'll see that in a second. Essentially, you have to create two sentences with the same meaning using two of the six words that you're given. Additionally, the meaning has to be the same intended meaning that the author originally had, which is why, to go back to the first thing I said, it's so important to understand the sentence. Don't rush to look for the synonyms step back, slowly read the sentence to understand what's going on. But what's my trick? Well, look out for key twisting words, words that twist the meaning of a sentence, such as although, but, yet, hardly, belies, although, even though, and I could go on. I'm gonna show you a list on the screen of all my favorite twisting words. Now, as a rule of thumb, if a sentence doesn't have one of these twisting words, it's just a straight sentence. We want a word that expresses what's been expressed elsewhere in the sentence. In a sense, we're gonna need a synonym of what's gone before. I'm gonna show you an example of this in a second. If you see one of these twisting words, the chances are that you're gonna to need to say the opposite of what's gone before. You're gonna need an antonym a word that means the opposite of what's gone before. This is the most common circumstance that you'll see in the GRE sentence equivalent section. Finally, at the hardest level, you might even see two or three or more twisting words. And that's when you really need to figure out, are we saying the opposite to the opposite and that kind of thing. And I'll give you one example of that in a moment. The words you can see are not necessarily a complete list, but these are just the most common words that come up. If you can think of more examples, write them in the comments and I will tell you whether they are also twisting words. Without further ado, it's time for three or four brilliant examples to summarize this lesson. If you're learning anything so far, please hit that like button and of course subscribe. So here is our first example. And remember our top goal is to understand what's going on. Only after that are we gonna think about any tricks. So let's read slowly. After hours, of acrimonious arguments, the negotiations reached an mm, semicolon, neither side was willing to compromise. So after hours of arguments, the negotiations reached a something, neither side was willing to compromise. So what two words here would fit in nicely? We can understand the sentence, roughly speaking, even if we don't know what acrimonious means. We know that there's been lots of arguments and that's not gonna help a negotiation, is it? That's gonna cause a negotiation to be blocked, especially if neither side was willing to compromise. So we've understood the sentence. As it happens, there are no contrasting words. There's no but, yet, even though, despite, 
Therefore, I'm looking for two words that just sum up what's going on. In a sense, synonyms for what's going on. The negotiations reached an, it wouldn't fit to say solution, and it also wouldn't fit to say resolution. That's a more positive word. So here, the big decision is do we go with conclusion and end, which mean roughly the same thing, or impasse and deadlock. And here it's about tone. If we've understood the tone of the sentence so far, we know that conclusion and end is a bit too positive. That's almost successful, right? If negotiations reach an end or conclusion, that could be that they've been a success. Whereas the words impasse and deadlock, they capture the negative tone of the sentence. It's acrimonious, it's argumentative, they don't like each other, therefore it's an impasse, it's a deadlock, nothing's gonna happen, it's blocked. There were no twisting words, it was just a straightforward, acrimonious disagreement that reaches an impasse, a deadlock. Neither side is willing to go any further or to compromise. And that's the first example. There might not be a single twisting word in the whole sentence. Time for an example or two of sentences that do have these twisting words, which is much more common. This is a hard example. I would call this a 160 to 170 level example. So again, our top priority is to understand the sentence. The last candidate interviewed conducted herself with commendable mm, even when badgered with questions that had drawn unseemly outbursts from all the other interviewees. So before we get to the trick, what's actually going on here? Well, they're praising this candidate. Commendable is linked to the word recommend, it's, it's praise. Even when she was badgered with questions, given many questions, that had drawn unseemly outbursts. Now, even if you didn't know unseemly, outburst is a negative thing. So other people had reacted with outbursts. All the other interviewees had reacted badly, but she's reacted with commendable something. And that's gonna be key to getting it right. Now, as for the trick, we've got an even when here. Even when, it's a contrast. Her behavior is gonna be contrasted with the unseemly outbursts of the other candidates. So we're looking for an antonym, an opposite of being unseemly. At this point, your vocab skills would have to kick in. You would have to know that decorum and propriety are the opposite of being unseemly. Decorum and propriety means behaving correctly with considerable politeness and calmness and behaving with the manners expected of you and the etiquette expected of you. And that would be the opposite of this twisting phrase, the unseemly outbursts. Unseemly is like impolite, without etiquette. The other words mean tenacious, pertinacity, determined, that doesn't fit in this sentence. Adroitness means skill, which could fit, but isn't the opposite of unseemly. Alacrity again means alertness, but again, that is not the opposite of unseemly. And presence of mind is linked to alacrity, but again, is not the opposite of what comes later in the sentence, so that'd be wrong. Of course, these are higher level words, but the concept still works. Time for another example. The mm tone of the biography is entirely unexpected since both the biographer in her previous works and her subject in all that he has written have valued levity over solemnity. Again, try to think about what's going on. So we have an unexpected tone because in all else that he has written, levity has been valued over solemnity. Now, even if you didn't know that levity meant lightness and humor and solemnity meant sadness or seriousness, you can still maybe get this question right. Even if, for example, you just knew that solemnity meant seriousness, we can see that this person normally values something over seriousness. And we see that twisting word unexpected and therefore something here 
should indicate that instead of valuing levity, which whatever that means, over seriousness or sadness, this time maybe they did put solemnity or seriousness or sadness above levity. It's unexpected. Normally they put levity over seriousness or sadness, solemnity, but this time it's unexpected. They're placing seriousness or sadness as the emphasis. That's the tone that's unexpected. Which two of these six words emphasize seriousness or sadness over levity, which is not the normal way round for this author? Well, we can eliminate some. It's not gonna be jaunty, that's happy or upbeat. Jocose, if you know your vocabulary, is linked to joy, which again is close to happiness. So it's not gonna be that. Frivolous means lighthearted. Again, a bit like levity, but here it's the twist. It's solemnity over levity. So it's not frivolous. And ironic means something totally different, which leaves us with the two sadder words, lugubrious or sad and melancholy, which is again, a synonym of sad. We caught the unexpected twist. Not levity over solemnity, but this time solemnity or seriousness or sadness coming first as the tone. Let's do an example of the double twist, the hardest kind of question you might get. Even though the vocab isn't that hard, it's the double twist that makes this quite troublesome. Again, let's try and understand the sentence most of all. Although it does contain some pioneering ideas, one would hardly characterize the work as. Now, if you understand that sentence, you can get the right answer almost straight away. If you don't understand, it's gonna be much harder. I'm gonna assume that you didn't fully grasp the sentence, even with the rereading, and therefore we're gonna try and rely on this trick to get us the right answer. I noticed two twisting words, although and hardly. Hardly is the equivalent of you wouldn't, right? He is hardly very fast, that means he's slow. He is hardly very poor, that means he's rich. It's an opposite word, it's a twisting word, like although. So we have a double twist. The sentence starts with, although it does contain some pioneering ideas, pioneering means original. You could expect the sentence to end with something like, although it does contain some pioneering ideas, his work is mainly unoriginal. And that's if there were no further twists. But here there's an extra twist, the hardly. So although it does contain some pioneering ideas that would suggest originality, one would not characterize the work as, it's almost like a negative with a negative cancels out and we're just left saying the same thing. Original and innovative, both meaning you know, pioneering or breakthrough. Although it does contain some original ideas, we are not overall gonna characterize the work as original and innovative. We have two twisting words and they essentially cancel out. So we're left just saying a synonym of the original key concept, which was pioneering. Now again, that was much harder than just understanding the sentence on its own and that's why I emphasize reading slowly for understanding, but still the trick saved us. We have two twisting words which cancel out, leaving us just needing a synonym for the main idea, which was pioneering. So we went for original and innovative. We did it. Thank you for watching and thank you for sticking by the channel. I have great plans for the future of this channel. We'll see how it goes, but thank you anyway for watching and please do subscribe and have a brilliant day.